fear of the unknown. It's part of the human condition. It makes our heart race, our pulses pound, and our skin to crawl. What's looming in the closet? What's beneath the floorboards? Perhaps nothing. Or something that could drag you down into the deepest, darkest places you could ever imagine. What makes us scared? What makes us second-guess ourselves? The question is, what invokes these thoughts? Scary stories? Some so out there you just want to tell yourself that it's just make-believe, right? That it's just something our parents tell us to be good little boys and girls. Or maybe, just maybe, there is a hint of truth there, and it's not just urban legend. In this episode, I explore such stories. So just take my hand, and maybe we'll get through this unscathed. One of the strangest structures in the United States is the home of the late Sarah Winchester, the widow of gun magnate William Winchester. Sarah believed ghosts created by her husband's Winchester rifles would come for vengeance. To protect her, she built a mansion in Northern California that was endlessly under construction for 36 years. It is said she believed that keeping it always in flux would ward off spirits who would do her harm. But the construction is nonsensical at best. There are windows that look into other portions of the home rather than outside. There are doors and stairwells that lead to nowhere. All told, an estimated $75 million by today's rates was spent on the house, which has been a tourist attraction since 1923, five months after she died of heart failure at the age of 83. The Doodler was a deceptively mundane name given to an uncaught serial killer who terrorized the gay community of San Francisco's Tenderloin in the 1970s. From January 1974 to September 1975, the Doodler, also called the Black Doodler, was credited for murdering 14 men and assaulting three others. He got his name from the bizarre modus operandi that would begin at a bar, where he'd sketch a portrait of the target to break the ice. But if this flirtation led outside of the Tenderloin's gay club, things turned gruesome with the doodler stabbing his victim to death, horrendously mutilating their bodies. But why, with a trio of surviving witnesses, did the doodler remain at large? The doodler's identity remains unknown. A persistent murder mystery that has served as a boogeyman tale for generations to the locals of Hagley, England, began on April 18th of 1943, when four boys snuck onto the privately owned Hagley Woods to go hunting. While scaling a tree, they came across a human skeleton crammed in its trunk. Despite fear of retribution for their poaching, the police were called in, and soon the body was unearthed, raising more questions than answers. Found in a witch hazel tree, mistaken by some to be witch elm, was the body of a young woman the public took to calling Bella Donna, or Bella. Her body was whole, except for a hand found buried nearby. She's believed to have been killed roughly 18 months before, in October of 1941, and placed in a tree before rigor mortis has set in. This seemingly innocuous bridge in Dumbarton, Scotland, is a suicide hotspot for depressed canines. Over 50 dogs have thrown themselves headlong from the bridge to death or serious injury. It also occurs at the same part of the bridge, in the same weather, to the same long-muzzled breeds. Back in 1994, the bridge was a site of an even greater horror story. When local man Kevin Moy 
cast his baby off the parapet, claiming the youngster was the Antichrist. Moy unsuccessfully tried to follow the baby into the afterworld, though only succeeding in seriously injuring himself and winding up in a psychiatric home. Are the dogs being drawn over the bridge by the same force that compelled Moy to murder his child? No one knows for certain. H.H. H. Holmes built a hotel in a bustling part of Chicago in the 1890s and designed it to be a perfect killing floor for his sick desires. Later called Murder Castle, it was designed to be a maze of windowless rooms making escape virtually impossible for those Holmes chose to trap. No one aside from Holmes knew the full layout of the place, and he repeatedly hired and fired new builders to construct this killing castle in portions. Some of the weirder attributes of this hotel were doors only able to be opened from the outside, doorways that open on brick walls, a safe big enough to put a person inside, and a chute that allowed him to dump the bodies from the upper floors straight to the basement, where two massive furnaces and large supplies of flesh-dripping acid were stored. He confessed to 27 murders, but theorists believe that there were over 200 victims. Now, these stories would make great horror movies, no doubt, considering the history here. But perhaps some things should just be left alone. Maybe we shouldn't disturb these spirits and risk becoming part of the story itself. Like, share, and comment if you enjoyed this one. Till next time, I'll be seeing you.